What's going on everyone? It's Adam from Spiritus Systems. And today we're gonna to talk about a uh, old product that we have since revised. It's the Recovery Handle Mark II. So this product was uh, something that we experimented with way back uh, when we actually started the company. We started having this idea that we should have, you know, some, some way of moving a casualty around the battle space in a more efficient manner. Uh, shortly after we launched our first iteration of it, we were contacted by Rich Mason down at Darcy, uh, believe it or not. And he, uh, he informed us that, hey, this is a, this is a Darcy design, essentially, uh, and you're doing it wrong. So we took a lot of advice and, and uh, mentorship from Rich. He, you know, he helped us out a lot. This is a co-branded product. Uh, and it's something that we're, uh, we're really proud of. We ran them for quite a while before we decided that uh, we were gonna upgrade some things on it. And uh, you know, his method and, and the way that he uh, taught us really how to move casualties, uh, it, it really revolutionized the product. And uh, we were able to take you know, the, the non-standard uh, way of doing things, or I should say the traditional way of doing things and uh, making it into a product that you could easily you know give out to all of your guys on your team and uh, everyone can set it up the same way and uh, there's, there's a lot of advantages to having it as a product instead of something that is, is manufactured just kind of by the guys in the team room so i have a bunch of plate bags here and some components uh, if you're not familiar with our plate carrier in particular the lv119 uh, over it has uh, some pass-throughs on the top of the bag uh, right up here on the top. Those pass-throughs go inside of the plate bag, which is gonna be pretty important when we start talking about uh, the recovery handle. But we have some components over here, so I'm just gonna kinda go through them slowly, and we're just gonna talk about um, about how they work and, and what they do. So the first piece is uh, this little chassis here. So this is a trifold. Opens up just like that, has Velcro you know, on various sides. And uh, this will serve as kind of the the bed of the entire product. This is where our actual strap is going to live, so it's out of the way. It's nice and neatly S-folded in here. Uh, and it's also how it's gonna deploy rapidly when we need it. On our uh, legacy product, the Mark I, we had sewn on stays on the back of this, uh, this chassis. And that's one of the major changes and differences between the old product and this one. Since then, we've changed to using uh, Tegris stays these two guys here, and uh, they have some snaps on them, so we'll go into how to set that up and how that looks in a minute. And then we have the strap itself. So this is uh, this is just webbing. We have a, a G-hook on one side, a G-hook wave, so it locks in place, and then we have a coat-branded label there as well. And then an optional item, which is different from uh, the Mark I as well, is the carabiner. Uh, a lot of the feedback that we got from the field was the carabiner that we were including with, uh, with the Mark I was not adequate for some of the belt sizes, you know, big battle belts, things like that. Uh, and guys wanted a locking, a self-locking carabiner as well. Uh, so we upgraded to uh, this carabiner here, um, which is also available, but it's now an add-on. So if you have your carabiner that you like better, you don't have to, you know, spend the bucks to get one of these. You can just use yours. But if you don't have one, or if you want the one that we think is, is the best for uh, mounting to your belt, you can just pick one of these up as well. So this plate bag right here has uh, a recovery handle attached to it. This is an LV-119 rear plate, overt plate bag. And as you can see, there is not a lot of uh, stuff going on on the outside of the plate bag. The magic is really inside the plate bag or inside the chassis of the recovery handle. And we designed this bag specifically around the Darcy methodology of casualty evacuation. So we wanted to have a way to route all of this internal to the bag so it's, it's low profile, it's not getting snagged. And we really wanted a way for you to be able to deploy uh, the recovery handle repeatedly over a training cycle. So if you're out doing shoot house activities and you have guys going down, you can train to actually deploy the handle, drag them around the house, and then you know they can recock very easily for the next uh, next iteration of training, instead of having to use you know rubber bands or zip ties or any of these other ways that guys attach things to their, their panels, uh, and it makes it kind of difficult for training. And what I found is that basically 
people just won't use it. If they're not able to do it efficiently, they're just not gonna use it in training, which is, you know, training for casualty evacuation is something we should be doing uh, every time we're in the house. Uh, we should be definitely practicing that as it's, it's, it's a perishable skill and uh, it's, it's a way to really test out your equipment and know that it's gonna work or not. So fundamentally, why should you have a drag handle? Uh, and the answer is, is pretty complex. Every plate carrier on the market uh, from the early 2000s onward had a, uh, a small handle right here on the top of the plate bag. And it's, it's arguable what that was for. Was that handle there for just carrying your plate carrier around? Was it there for trying to drag a casualty? Uh, it doesn't really matter. It was getting used in that capacity. So when somebody gets shot and they go down and guys are trying to support them and to, to drag them out of that situation, they are bending over you know, at the hips and they are grabbing either the shoulder straps of the plate carrier or they're grabbing that one handle on the back and they're trying to drag that person uh, and they are at a 90 degree. And that is a, like a very, very poor way to, you know, if you think about lifting a lot of weight, uh, you're not using your knees at all. You're really just kind of bent over and your spine is, is bearing a lot of that weight. Uh, it also is, is very uncomfortable or potentially de like deadly for the casualty. So when you grab a casualty by the shoulder straps of the plate carrier and you pull this thing, uh, that front plate bag is actually just gonna slide up right into their throat. So you're, you're trying to drag a guy who might be, you know, bleeding out or whatever, and then you're inducing another form of trauma by choking him with his own plate carrier. So that's a, another point uh, there where basically you, we needed some other solution. There needs to be some other solution. And lo and behold, there, there has been another solution. Uh, the traditional method taught by Darcy, developed by Darcy, is uh, using tubular nylon webbing. And if the back of your plate carrier has molly on it, you essentially will run that tubular nylon webbing into a loop through the, uh, through the molly on the back of the plate bag. And then you will you know, rubber band it to the top in a way that is, is uh, easy for deployment. And then you'll clip that loop into your, uh, your belt and you'll go off and, and it works very well. Uh, you can you know, pull that handle off and use it in very much in a similar, uh, similar form as this. Uh, where that method falls short is, is just that uh, training aspect. It really is, well, I, I guess it's two in my opinion. It's, it's uh, the training aspect and it's also the, um, the level of cleanliness on the back of your plate, plate carrier. It's the, it, you know, the issues with deploying straps inadvertently. It's a you know, snag hazard, stuff like that. So I think you know, the first, first point of training is, is very important, but it's also important to have a clean surface to where you're not snagging on, on things when you're exiting helicopters or vehicles. Uh, so how it works, um, you basically, we use this carabiner here. You take this carabiner and it attaches into the base of, uh, of the strap that hangs out the bottom of the bag. And this carabiner, I like to permanently just leave this on my belt personally. Some guys like to have it on the carrier side. Some guys like to have it on the belt side. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but this carabiner is going to attach to your pants belt. So it's important that, uh, that's an important distinction is that it's going to the pants belt and not to your battle belt necessarily. Now your battle belt may, may be your pants belt and that's okay. Then you just attach it to that. What you don't want is if you have one of those over belts that doesn't use any kind of uh, inner belt system that's not really attached, you don't want to attach this to that. That belt will just start to slide up, uh, especially if you're uh, very skinny. It, it can just slide right up and you get kind of that same effect of just choking yourself with your plate carrier again. So you definitely want it on the pants belt. And what that's doing, this is kind of the money of the whole system, is that this is actually enabling your, uh, you know, whoever's dragging you as a casualty, it's enabling them to pull you from your hips instead of from your throat, essentially. So when somebody grabs this handle, all of that uh, drag force is translated into the belt, if that makes sense. So you're, you have a lot of pull force going on your hips and they're grabbing you. It's not a lot of upper body tension on the casualty. Uh, so inside this strap, I'm just gonna deploy it from the sides here. You can see there is all of that webbing is just S folded in there, right? And as you 
pull and deploy the strap out of the bag, that strap is just gonna pour out the sides of the handle. So now you have your loop of, for which you can drag somebody with. So if you imagine there's a casualty and I just deployed this, now I can stand upright and I can pull that casualty in a much more firm and powerful stance. I can grab him and just drag him as far as I need. Uh, some other side, you know, kind of benefits of the strap is that it actually, if you can imagine a casualty laying in here, uh, your head actually becomes cradled by the strap. So you have, you know, we're pulling from the hips and then we're also lifting the upper body off the ground, which reduces friction. So as you're pulling a guy, he's, you're not pulling his entire mass on the ground. You actually have him lifted up a little bit and it's cradling his head, which is good for a casualty, right? We don't want his head just flopping around everywhere. Uh, it also enables more than one person to come and, and help assist with a pull. So you really can, you get two guys on either side, one guy on either side of the strap and uh, you're pulling, you can pull a guy, you know, indefinitely, really. You can just keep pulling and pulling and it does not exhaust you. Most guys are pretty, pretty fit and from you know standing straight up you can drag a lot of weight uh, whereas if you're bent over you just cannot sustain that drag the other benefit of having me upright as the person dragging the casualty is that my situational awareness is still there so if i'm upright i can still look past the casualty and i can also turn very easily and look behind me to see where i'm going as i'm dragging the casualty which is something that we see in training guys will take a casualty and they'll start dragging as hard as they can and they won't, they, they're not paying attention because they're bent over uh, and they're so focused on dragging the casualty. They're not gonna keep lifting the casualty up, you know, dragging it, setting him down, then looking up. It just, it just doesn't work well. With this, I'm upright the whole time. If somebody, if another threat presents itself, I can just drop the strap. You know, I have my weapon right there. Uh, if there's two guys pulling, you don't even have to take your hand off of your, uh, your, your weapon system. You can drag with one arm and uh, have your weapon ready as well. So, in, you know, the theory of this is getting casualties off the X very quickly. Uh, and our, you know, implementation is, you know, it's the only one on the market and it's, uh, it's the only one that is a pre-packaged system that you can, you know, buy for your unit and uh, just, just get them all set up the same. So the biggest difference that I think guys are gonna see on this, or you're gonna notice if you own a, a Gen 1 or a Mark 1, you're gonna notice that there's these kind of weird Tegris stays snapped on the back. This was also feedback that we got from the field. So if you are in very unique conditions, but if you have a guy who is, you know, over 250 pounds and is his, you know, wears a very large plate or his plate is filling the entirety of the bag, uh, he might you might be presented with the conditions where he has enough mass to pin the stays inside of the plate bag. And so what that would cause is a very difficult scenario where you might not be able to deploy the strap efficiently. So you're trying to pull it out, you know, of the, you're trying to pull the stays out of the bag and it's just not coming out. Uh, and so we, we had a, somebody report this to us, so we, uh, we decided that we were gonna update the product to el eliminate the, that variability. We basically never wanna see somebody struggling to deploy the strap when they need it. So we tried a bunch of different things, but we kind of landed on this design. And how this works is we have directional snaps on, uh, on the handle itself. And if you pull these in one direction, they don't come off. And if you pull them in the other direction, they'll come right off, right? So it's a directional snap. And that snap will, is, it has enough force to where you're not gonna be snagging it with your sling and constantly pulling your strap off or, or knocking it off. But if it ever gets pinned, even though you, uh, you're pulling on it, you just can't get it out, that snap will actually, uh, will come loose at a certain amount of force. So there's no way that the strap is getting pinned inside the bag. Uh, if you need to get it out, you're going to be able to get it out. Another benefit of having the Tegris is that Tegris is a semi-malleable material. So you can take this and you can actually give it a little bit of a bite. So if you find that your strap is uh, coming, a like riding up a little bit every time you pull your sling off, or you just need a little bit more friction in there to keep it seated right, uh, you can just kind of bend these stays to, to meet that friction requirement to whatever you need. So that's the other reason we went with that. 
So I showed you on uh, our plate bag, which is the recommended configuration. Uh, I recommend use, you know, obviously I recommend everyone gets rid of their current plate carrier and buys an LV119. And I, and this is one of the reasons is, is the fact that we have an integrated drag strap. Um, but it will work on Molly carriers as well. So if you have something that has Molly and that's what you have to use, you know, the setup that I'm about to show you is, is pretty much the same. You're just gonna be routing it through the Molly on the back of the plate bag instead of routing it inside our plate bag, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna show you uh, just very quickly. We're also gonna have another video that goes a little, maybe a little more in depth and a little more detailed on how to set up your drag strap. Uh, but we figured it couldn't hurt to kind of show you the, the same steps here. So I have a black plate bag and I'm gonna be using a Coyote brown uh, strap just to give it a little contrast so it's a little easier to see. So the first step is uh, actually routing the strap through the handle. And so what I like to do is I take the side with the G hook, I open up my trifold, and it doesn't matter which side you go through, but I just take it and you'll see there's a piece of webbing here and this piece of webbing has a cavity behind it. So I'm just gonna take that G hook and I'm just gonna run it inside that channel. So you can see it's in here, it's in between these two layers. So you have webbing on one side, you have your snaps on the other, and the strap is actually running in between them. And it should be loose enough that you can just kind of stick your thumb in there and just push it through until that G hook kind of emerges from the other side. So that's kind of our first step. Now, when we're orienting this to the bag and we're starting to route it, you wanna make sure that your Spiritus Systems label is on the bottom facing the bottom of the plate bag. So if you can see there, should look like that. That's because we want this, when we close it, we want the hook side to be on the top, the plate bag. So then the next step I like to do is I take my webbing and I just kind of run it through my hand all the way until I find that you know free running end. And then I look at my plate bag and there's actually these two channels they're inside of these loops here that like your back panel would run, run through or whatever. They're just one end from that. And we're going to take that webbing and we're just gonna run it inside, just like that. So we're just literally pushing the webbing inside. Open up the bottom of the plate bag. And then inside, we'll see this piece of webbing coming out. Now that piece of webbing should sit on top of your grid. So the grid that you use to uh, you know, mount your cummerbund, or if you already have a cummerbund mounted, it should, uh, it should be on top of that grid. If it's not, you just kind of got to get in there and, uh, and mess with it. Now you can see on the bottom, we actually have a, a single hole in the center of the bottom plate bag right here. So you're going to take that running end and you're just going to route it out of there then you can just pull it through. So one of the important notes on this is that we want to keep, we want to try to keep everything as neat as we can. We want the webbing to be very, very neat and managed well. We want to try to eliminate twists in the webbing. And so right now I have this webbing coming out. I have my strap at the top here. Uh, the snaps and the, the Velcro are facing up. That means my webbing is nice and flat going through the plate bag. So I'm just going to grab it and I'm just gonna run it through my fingers to make sure that it's still nice and flat. There's no twists in it. And then I'm gonna run it the same way, but back up through the bag and then out the other side at the top. So I just find that running in on the inside and then I just match up my fingers here on the inside of the top of the bag here. And then you'll see it just come out. And here I like to check that my strap is in fact nice and even and flat and there's no twists the twists aren't going to absolutely be a big deal if you have a twist in it it's not going to prevent it from working but uh, to make it work mo the most efficient and just to keep your kit nice and, and tidy and neat i recommend that at this point you just make sure your strap should just be laying just like this you should have a nice loop on the bottom with no twist it shouldn't look like this it shouldn't have some weird you know it shouldn't look like that 
Just be nice and flat like that. Now that we're back at the top, again, making sure we don't have a ton of twists in here, we're gonna take this tri-glide and then there's a certain way that we wanna, we wanna weave this through. So we're gonna take the, the strap and we're gonna put it through the loop that is closest to the hook on the G-hook. And then we're just gonna go over and back through the second loop, just like that. Now this is a wave, so technically it's locked right now. Technically this is completely locked in and uh, it's good to go. This is also how we can adjust the height of the strap. And the height of the strap is important for your body type. So if you're very, very tall, you're gonna want a longer strap. If you're very, very short, you're gonna want a shorter strap. Uh, you're gonna have to experiment a little bit with sizing on that. But uh, generally, if the strap is clipped in and you, uh, and you have the strap deployed, you want it to at least reach kind of the top of your helmet. Um, that's kind of a general rule, but it's, it's not concrete. You definitely can have a little bit extra or a little bit less. But uh, we're gonna bring it back through actually into, back into that top loop. And this is just a safety mechanism. So this is just a re rerouting back through. So we end up with something kind of like that. And that enables us to lock in the strap and there's just no way that the strap could ever come out, right? Unless it breaks or something, it is not coming out of that, that G hook. So this next part is, is pretty important because it's the way that we get this strap kind of complete and nice and neat inside of the, the bag. So we open up our trifold and we have this piece. This webbing is here to protect your hand from the G hook, right? And the G hook is there so that we have an open system so that you can route it easily uh, without having to tie any knots. So you're gonna pull this from the other side so that the G hook is inside of that piece of webbing. So it's, it's protected, it's in there, it's not gonna come out, it's not gonna you know, clip your hand or whatever. And then we're going to go to the bottom of the bag again, and we're just gonna pull all of our excess webbing through. And if we've done a good job of keeping everything nice and neat, we should have a uh, nice and neat strap and we should have a nice and neat loop here we shouldn't have any weird twists up at the top we shouldn't it shouldn't be hard for it to go in there and now we have a nice loop at the bottom and we're simply going to take this and we're just going to do an overhand nothing crazy nothing fancy just an overhand knot should look like a pretzel as you're pulling it through so now you have your strap set up it's nice and even everything's nice and flat you know and this again you don't want your knot sitting at a weird angle you don't want your knot halfway up the the rope you don't want half of the strap deployed out there you really want your knot kind of everything nice and flat and then at the end of it you have this nice knot that's going to help later when you're when you're wearing the uh, the system and it's actually clipped into your belt so the next step you might have to do once or twice because you're going to want to adjust this to your, again, your height. If you have a really long torso, you're really tall, and there's a lot of room between your plate bag and your belt, uh, you're going to have to drop this down a little bit. Again, if you're really short, you might have to suck it up some. So all we do is we take the strap, we pull it up to wherever we think that de desired knot uh, depth is from the bottom of our bag. So let's say that's a good depth. Now we're gonna take our stays and we're just gonna mount those onto the back of our uh, chassis. And they are directional again. So if you're kind of fighting it, it's because you're just trying to put it on the wrong way. So you just have to figure out which, where that little directional pop is and then it should just pop right on. And then I didn't have it there, so it just popped back off. There we go. So now it's nice, you should have that good tactile click. It should not come off uh, very easily. And what we're gonna do now is we're actually going to run our stays in the same holes that our strap is going through. You're gonna get a little resistance because they're tapered 
as you can see, they're tapered at the end so that they don't just come out uh, very easily. So we're just gonna push those stays all the way in until they're nice and seated. Uh, and then we're going to make sure that our knot is at the right length that we, we want. And we're gonna open up our trifold and we're gonna take our excess strap and we're just gonna kind of nestle it inside the chassis. You just wanna S fold this and then we're going to cover it all. Make sure that it's nice and neat. And then now we have a recovery handle Mark II mounted to the bag. That's the whole setup process. Essentially, you would just, you know, clip in before an operation. Anytime you think that you uh, are gonna put your plate carrier on, you're probably gonna clip in and uh, just have that ready. Guys are gonna be able to grab, you know, this, this handle. They're gonna be able to drag you uh, efficiently and safely. Uh, it's gonna be better for you as a casualty and uh, more efficient for them as, you know, aid and litter guys. This will work in conjunction with our back panels as well. So if you have an assault back panel, if you have a molly back panel, it'll work with those. As I stated before, it'll work on any molly carrier as well. The setup would be the same. You'd just be you know, running it through the, the uh, molly loops on the outside. So that's it for the recovery handle. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this. You know, comment below to, if you have any stories about actually having to do a real world casualty evacuation. We'd like to hear about how it went and uh, what you did and, and, you know, did it work or did it not work? So we appreciate it.